we will import this pre-built RF switch model into Cadence, integrate it into a simple circuit, and analyze the device response in the Spectre simulator. You can see the Cadence Library Manager with the addition of a MEMS Plus menu option. Within this MEMS Plus option, you can either create a tech library from a MEMS Plus process, or you can import an Innovator 3D schematic. Go ahead and select that one. And we'll select the RF switch 3D schematic that we've generated previously. Here we'll name our model, and we can choose to both import the layout as well as the schematic model. In this case, we'll do both. You can see that the item is added to the cell view, and both the layout and the symbol are available. Now I'm going to switch to a previously made schematic, which includes the RF switch, integrated into a very simple circuit. Here you can see the beam tip, both Z deflection as rotation about Y, which we had exposed in MEMS Plus, and the electrical connectors of the transmission lines and the actuation electrode shown as pins. Here the actuation electrode is connected to a pulse voltage. We can run a couple of analyses. I'll set the Spectre simulator in motion. We're running both a DC sweep analysis as well as an AC small signal analysis for a frequency sweep. You can see that the AC, analy AC analysis has completed and here the DC sweep is almost almost completed and when done the analysis results show up here in Cadence. We can modify this plot a bit to show a customary Bode plot for a frequency analysis and we'll make note that the frequency peak is around 10.5 kilohertz and here for the DC response you've plotted the Z deflection and you can see a customary pulling curve. Now you can visualize these plots 2D here in Cadence or you can return to MEMS Plus and within Scene 3D you can load both your AC analysis in this case and the DC analysis over here. For the AC analysis we'll input 10.3 E3 Hertz, 10.5 E3 Hertz, and we can watch the harmonic response of our device. As expected, this is the, uh, the first frequency mode shape, and so perhaps this is as expected, but for higher order modes, the mode visualizing the mode shape becomes quite helpful, and for what it's worth, we can see the DC sweep results <clears throat> in 3D as the switch pulls down and makes contact with the transmission lines. Now the final thing we'd like to show is the generation of a parametrized layout cell, P-cell, for this MEMS accelerometer device. As before, I'd like to point out that a couple of variables here T for temperature, the plate size, as well as the orientation, which modifies the orientation of the device on the XY plane, are exposed and will be available within the Cadence environment. So once again, we'll switch to Cadence. And here we have the accelerometer library. Here we have the imported model from MEMS Plus with both the layout as well as the schematic symbol. In this case we'll be dealing with the layout, one of the accelerometer layout files. Now if I edit the properties here, you can see under the parameter list that T, plate size, as well as orientation have been imported as parameters to be available for manipulation within the Cadence layout environment. So what we can do here as a demonstration is we can change the orientation, click OK, and you can see that the model is oriented 30 degrees relative to its previous position. You can also change the plate size and 
And you can see here that the size of the plate has been increased. So I'd like to thank you all for spending some time here to investigate the new functionality available in Coventer's MEMS Plus product suite. I hope you have enjoyed the demonstration. Thank you.